wanted to take a minute to talk about the experience of programming and processing um, in terms of being a person and having to deal with the computer. Um, because sometimes it can get really frustrating when you're trying something and it's just not working. It's good in your mind to be able to separate out the different conceptual pieces that happen when you try to run your program. So I have an example program here. Um, and if I run it, here's my little square on the screen. But when I hit this play button to make that happen, um, two main things are happening. One, the program that I've written in just text here is taken by the compiler and it's interpreted and it's turned into an executable program. So now if that sounds a little strange, let me go back over that. There's a program, which effectively you could say is processing, is the language, that understands what these instructions mean, assuming I've typed them in correctly. And from that, it builds an executable program that can run on your computer. It can build something like your web browser or your music software that you could give to somebody else and they could run on their computer. Um, it's made out of the bits and bytes that actually run on the processor. Because this text right here, this is just text. I could copy this into a Microsoft Word file and bring it back out and it would still be just text. So the compiler is the machine that does that. It's a special program that takes text and makes another program. It's a factory for factories, which is kind of amazing if you think about it. The second thing that happens after that is that processing this, this environment here runs that recently compiled program. So when I hit this play button, it compiles, then actually opens up that program. And it's good to understand those two different steps. Because if I type something in here that is incorrect, that's not a real number with these letters that I've just typed in here, and I try to run it, this syntax error that I got, that's the compiler um, being unable to take what I've given it and make a program. It doesn't know what this means, and it, it can't interpret it. So that brings us to the second point that I want to make here. There's a difference between syntax and semantics. So when we say syntax, we're talking about the way that we need to give processing instructions. Um, I'm speaking in English, so I'm using English syntax. You might also call it the grammar, right? Um, in processing, we need to close our functions out with a curly brace at the end, and all statements need to end with a semicolon. Um, numbers can't have random arbitrary letters in the middle of them. You know, uh, some of these rules are obvious and some of them are quite obtuse. Um, but those are all syntax errors. If there's a syntax error, the compiler can't finish its job. We've given it a bad instruction that it doesn't understand. Um, likewise, if we typed a bunch of um, Python code, a different language into here, processing isn't gonna know how to interpret that. It can't compile it, it can't make use of it. The other type of problem that we run into is a semantic problem. Uh, another way to say that is the meaning of what we've typed. I could take this rectangle that we're drawing on the screen and I could push it so far off screen that there is no rectangle. Now it's still rendering or it's still trying to draw it on the screen. It's just somewhere down off the corner here. This is a semantic problem. I, I spoke the words correctly, but their meaning isn't useful to me. Um, another way to say this is we have a bug. The program runs, it just doesn't quite do what I wanted it to as a person. And the problem there is that I'm trying to take something that's very easy to tell another person, you know, hey, I want you to draw a square on the middle of the screen, but very difficult to tell a computer. And that's why we have to be exact with our wording. Um, we have to understand the order of operation um, and the, the call stack of functions and all these different things that make up programming in general. So let's take a look at a couple of these syntax errors that you might run into. So this is my program. It compiles correctly. There are no syntax errors. Um, let's just change some things and see what we get. Um, like I was doing earlier, I was typing just letters into the middle of this number and trying to compile it. Now we see syntax error. Maybe you're missing a right parenthesis. Um, that's gonna come up when processing isn't sure where one phrase or one word, say, started and another one ended. 
You can also see it says, expecting right paren found jib blah, 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 blah that I typed in here. So this first error um, isn't that useful, and it's kind of usually a more friendly error that they put up here. But this second one, expecting r paren, expecting right parentheses, this is the actual error coming out of the compiler. And if we drag this up, sometimes there'll be more um, errors there'll be a larger stack of problems that actually happened. So that gives me a clue as the programmer that whatever this is, say I didn't realize that I had entered it, I should probably go find that in my program and that the problem that I'm encountering is somewhere around there. So, okay, I'm gonna correct that and of course now it runs. Um, another common thing is missing a semicolon. Um, processing's better about that. So it says syntax error, maybe you're missing a semicolon but the actual compiler output was saying, expecting semi, semicolon, found, closing parenthesis. And you can see it's highlighted the line where it bumped into something unexpected after it was expecting me to be done with that line. So again, you know, just take a minute to read what the error is and try to guess what the compiler is having trouble with. Um, another similar error that you're gonna see is if you remove um, a parenthesis found one too many open parenthesis characters without a closing parenthesis to match it. And um, that's one of the most common mistakes that beginners make. It's, it's difficult to get in the habit of it, um, but an easy way to check is if you use the auto formatter, if you go up to um, edit, auto format, this will fix all of the uh, spacing issues. So if we just do some stuff like this and then hit auto format, you can see it indented everything carefully and it brought the um, the closing parenthesis here up against the bottom of our function. You don't wanna have a lot of open space between stuff. It makes it pretty hard to read and it makes it a lot harder as a person to be able to gauge where the open and closing sections of blocks are. Um, I hope this is helpful to beginners. Um, and the biggest thing I can say is just don't get frustrated and don't try to fix things too fast when you do have an error. You just stay calm and think about what the last thing you did was before it stopped working. That's usually your problem.